Hey everybody, so again today we are going to be talking about selling vintage fabric or fabric in general for a profit on eBay. Fabric that we find at yard sales, estate sales, that kind of thing. So the first half of this video might not make a whole lot of sense if you haven't watched my other video. Um, I'll put a picture up here. It was called Bins of Shame. <laughs> And it was basically the gist was it was my backlog of fabric that I had thrifted over the years. And I did a listing challenge and basically was going to be working on getting some of that fabric listed. That was about the end of September. So I just wanted to give an update on that and show today what has sold from what I was able to get listed so far. And um, let me see. Yes, that's what I wanted to say about that. And I was going to say, if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch it. Um, you don't have to watch it first, but watch it eventually, especially if you're interested in selling fabric. There were a lot of listing tips in that video, as well as read the comments, because you wonderful viewers gave us a lot more tips and information in the comments as well. So what I what I looked at my records and... Like I said before, I think that it was just a week of where I tried to really focus on listing the fabric. And um, then I've just kind of listed a few pieces, more pieces here and there. Since then, among all the other things I list, which if you follow me or watch me, you know that we list and sell a bunch of everything <laughs> on eBay. So anyway let's see i only got about 24 listings of fabric up um i'm you know i never claim to be a hustler is that the right word <laughs> i i don't you know i'm not like a crazy manic lister i have lots of other things going on in my life so i list when i can and um so i was happy that i got those 24 fabric listings up because it was better than nothing but since then, I've had eight of those listings sell. So that's a third of what I listed in the fabric category sold. So I think that's pretty good. I did cross post a few of the, this was all on eBay, and I did cross post a few of them onto Etsy and have gotten really no interest there. So I'm still focusing my attention on eBay for these. Um, I will put a link down below to my eBay listings if you wanted to take a look at them. And so today I thought, what else did I want to say? Okay. So today, right now, we're going to switch over to my computer. I'm going to show you those uh, eight, okay, nine listings sold. One of them's not been paid for, so I wasn't going to show you that because I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But uh, eight listings sold for a total of $287. So let's go ahead and go over to the computer. And then later on in the video, we are going to take a look at some brands and some names that might sell for pretty good money that we can be on the lookout for. And then towards the end, stay tuned, I will share a couple kind of unique vintage um, pieces of fabric that I had sold in the past that... Um, just something that I thought was fun that I can share with you. Okay. We'll start off with this Alexander Henry fabric. Uh, that is a name that we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video. But this seemed to me to be a little bit of an older um, an older fabric by Alexander Henry. They, It's still in business today. Let me get the salvage. So... It's just printed really simply on the side. This kind of gives you an idea of the texture. I just put bark cloth like, um, you know, there's true bark cloth and, and everything. This was kind of like a crepe. I didn't know if that was a good word to use too, like a crepe like material. But anyway, I had a, over two yards of it and I sold it for $30, which I thought was pretty good. That's, you know, you're looking at $12 to $15 a yard. Well, you know what I mean. So for two yards, right, they got two complete yards for $30. So that would be $15 a yard, but they got a little bit extra as well. So 
anyway, um, that type of material actually does pretty well. And I was actually, I was surprised that this was the fabric that sold the fastest, um, and was the first sale that I had. It's very mid-century looking type print as well, but abstract. So interesting colors and everything. I couldn't really, I didn't really find a big amount of the history of Alexander Henry, but there were some other um, bar cloth type fabrics that I found in solds. The next one was a juvenile print. Um, I, in a novelty print, like I said, I use those, um, I try to use those keywords when I'm when I'm selling fabrics that would work for kids or kids types item type items. And um, yeah, so again, I had a little over two yards of this. I use seersucker. You know, I don't know if that is an officially a seersucker, but it does have that that look and it has that puckering in these uh, columns or, or rows or whatever. If I should have used a different word, go ahead, leave the comment down below. Um, I'm still working on figuring out the difference between seersucker and plissé when I see it. <laughs> um, anyway, so as I said in the other video, as you see some of my listings and I make sure I put like a, a um, yardstick or some kind of thing that shows the scale of the fabric and the print on the fabric. And that sold for $25 with with plus shipping. Next up, this was interesting that I I had this one, I listed this one and another one that was was similar, not necessarily similar in theme, but it was a polished cotton, like very 80s type upholstery type fabric. And I listed one and I was like, wow, there's really no demand for this. And then I listed, I went ahead and listed this one. I just thought it was super pretty with the, the, the vases. I used the keyword chin, chinoiserie. <laughs> um, so just a very like Asian motif on here. I only had a little over a yard and a half. Um, and so I was surprised this one sold fairly quickly. So I think the theme had a lot to do with it. Um, but these polished cottons, it turns out like I, as I dug in my bins, I'm like, oh, I have more. And so since they didn't, they don't sell super well, I think I may end up lotting up the different patterns that I have. You know, they're these big, bold kind of florals. I think people would still want them. They just, I want to make use, the best use of my time. And so I think if I lotted them up, I might be able to, you know, make that listing worth my time. But this one sold really quickly, and I'm sure the theme and the, the picture, the print had a lot to do with it. So one and a half yards for $16.99 plus shipping. Then I also sold some vintage fabric. This was one of the ones I had that had flocking, which I thought was is really popular right now. Um, so the fabric, you can see kind of the overall repeating type fabric. It was on a gingham, the green gingham, which is the check. And I think I showed this fabric in the other video. Um, again, a little over two yards of this fabric and it sold for $30. The orange flowers are, that's the flocking part. They kind of feel like felt and they're raised up from the, from the fabric a little bit. So that one went fairly quickly as well. Now a really nice sale I had were these velveteen pieces of fabric. Um, crazy mod looking colors and patterns. There was some neon a little bit in it. Um, you can see a little up close there's this bird. So there were so many different like I asked in a group for like keywords and it like it went all over. Some people were like, oh, this looks like, um, you know, like Middle Eastern. And some people are like, no, it looks South American, you know. So it feels like it could just fit so many different things. So I, own, I knew to use the word velveteen because it came um, when I thrifted it. The back 
it had the little staple from the fabric store, the little card on it that was, you know, when they sell remnants, they'll say, they'll put how many yards it is or how big the piece is and just kind of staple it to the fabric. So it still had those, that. And so I sold this piece about three yards for $60, so $20 a yard. And the same buyer bought the other piece I had, which was this one. I had two and a half yards and I listed that for $50. Um, I just did a little bit less per yard on this one just because, I mean, it was smaller, but I also felt like this, this was a more interesting print. But in any case, the same buyer bought both pieces and paid a total of 50 plus 60. And so that was a really good fabric sale. I, I like that. So that was just vintage. There's no name, you know, it just was based on the print and on the age and the fabric. So I thought that was cool. Another nice sale I had was this sheer, semi sheer fabric. Um, I have two pieces of this different patterns. Um, the other one is still listed, but this one, just such a pretty color, but just a very cool, like semi sheer fabric. And there were five, over five yards of it. So $60 for that little section. And it was, it's Hawaiian textiles, THC. Um, I think it's the Hawaiian company or something like that. And Anyway, that, that's a fairly good brand to keep an eye out for as well. Um, just anything, if especially if it has a real Hawaiian, you know, type look to it or bark cloth fabric by them will, will do pretty well. Okay, so those were a few good sales like in a row <laughs> from, from the fabric that I listed. So I was happy with that. Then the, this was something I had picked up a bolt of these not that long ago for about $6. And so I'm not sure exactly how many uh, fabric panels are on the bolt. So I cut off, we cut off one or two, I should say Mr. Pishposh did it because he can cut in a straighter line than I can because he's Mr. Precision. Um, but anyway, he, we cut off a couple so I could get a photograph and right now I just put five available. Um, and then when those, as those go down, you know, I'll, I'll keep track of on my bolt, how much, how many of these I have. Um, but I sold one. So I sold one for $15. So my whole investment is paid for already. And these will just be an easy, hopefully they sell, you know, on a regular basis. And then they paid shipping as well. So these, this was neat because they were on, they're on the bolt and all the information about them is, you know, is on the edge of the bolt. So it was on its original little thing. Lightning McQueen, always popular and Dixie, Disney, Pixar, um, you know, it's all licensed and everything like that. So it's all good to go. So I was happy one of those sold. And then here I just showed you, here's my shop, and these are the 16 um, ones I have left listed. So this is what I was able to get done since then, you know, different ones that I have listed. So I have that mid-century fabric is listed, I have it for 90, I have the Mario Brothers, I have it up for 100 just to kind of see. Um, there's that heavy duty upholstery fabric tapestry. I have that up for 90. Here's the other uh, semi sheer floral pattern by THC that I have listed. Here's that other polished cotton um, 80s designer, you know, upholstery fabric piece. Um, just a couple other, there's like a novelty print. This one and then this one I had had listed um, before the challenge. And that is just cause this is the category of my store that has like sewing notions and fabrics in it. Um, anyway, 
So I was just going to share those. And there is, like I said, one other um, piece of fabric that sold, but they have not paid for it. I don't know if they will. So let us go on to our next little subject. So those were my fabric sales for the last few weeks since that last video about um, selling fabric. And like I said, that totaled about $287. It might be another $30 if that one listing gets paid for, but it's not looking good. So we'll see. Um, what I wanted to do now is just share some of um, some other names in fabric to be on the lookout for. And there's a few things I just wanted to have you keep in mind as we do this research and look into fabric that sells is that um, some of the names that we'll talk about today are just like, they're good, right? They're just, it's a no brainer. You just, if you find it, you buy it, right? Then there's gonna be others that will depend on whether the whether the print is discontinued or not. Um, if, you know, if the value of it will depend on whether it's discontinued or not. It also, the value will depend on like the yardage, right? So some of the high numbers that we're gonna be seeing um, are because the person is selling like a whole bolt or they're selling 10 yards or 15 yards or something like that. So we we'll try to keep that in mind as well. And then solds are kind of hard to check on, on eBay as far as value because um, some people sell fabric by the yard and then some people sell it as a whole lot. So we're going to see high numbers because we're looking high to low. Um, and so we not only want to keep in mind how much of it are they selling, but also are they selling it as a lot? Or are they selling it as like by the yard? So by the yard, someone might sell like 20, like 15 yards or 10 yards at $10 a piece or $20 a piece. It's going to show up in solds at that price, like at $10 or at $20. But in reality, the, the seller got like $150 or, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing the math right now. But um, anyway, so just keep that in mind too. So just because a, there's a lower price um, shown on the solds, if you look at their title, if they say by, BTY, like by the yard, or if they say by the yard, then you know that, oh, they might have sold like 10 yards of it or five yards of it. And so their selling price was actually much higher. So I hope that makes sense. But we will take a look right now at some, um, oh, another thing to keep in mind too is that we're looking at 90 days back only on eBay right now. That takes us kind of into the summer and craft supplies sometimes do okay in the summer. I saw some sales like in one particular brand, like their Halloween fabric was their highest price sales and that it was all selling back in August. So I think as people were kind of looking ahead to get ready for the holiday, but um, you know, in general, some sales, I think on fabric or things like that would slow down a little bit in the summer, kind of increase in the winter as people are home more, inside more and wanting to attack their little craft projects. So that's just a theory. Anyway, so keep that in mind as far as pricing and the amount of items that are sold. So let's go back and look at the computer. Right, with a name we know, we know this name from selling clothing and all sorts of other things. Um, we're talking Ralph Lauren. So Ralph Lauren, if you didn't know, Ralph Lauren um, linens are a big bolo. Be on the lookout for um especially the big like cabbage roses and florals and things like that. So if you find sheets or comforters or things like that in Ralph Lauren fabric, it's usually good money. Um, so there's, they also sold fabric. And if you just kind of look at some of these prices, <laughs> a bolt of Ralph Lauren fabric, it was linen as well, sold for over a thousand dollars. Um, Here's another one, 15 yards sold for 859. Um, this is just like a textured upholstery fabric. Uh, that looks like a lot of fabric though, 25 yards. So, you know, people are doing larger upholstery projects. Some more upholstery fabric, eight yards of it for 650. I would not sneeze at that. 
um, as you can see going down. Uh, someone found some fabric that has the famous polo bear on it. Um, it doesn't say in the title how much that is, but $500 for that. I mean, how much as in yardage. Some more 1990s or 2000s polo Ralph Lauren. It's a Native American print, it says somewhere in there. Uh, less than 400 but their shipping is like really high so it, it says it's a bolt so that would be a lot of fabric pretty heavy so some basic ones but that's upholstery as you can see upholstery fabric it was a paisley got five yards for three hundred dollars Ralph Lauren another decorator type fabric 12 yards for 325 so I don't know about you, but I'm probably just going to pick up Ralph Lauren fabric wherever I see it, if I see it. Then a similar idea, Pendleton, another name we know uh, for lots of things, fa uh, clothing and blankets, things like that. And the fabric is wool. Um, they sold yardage of fabric. I don't know that I was really aware of that, but... Um, the first, the highest listings are, um, looks like they're remnants to blankets, right? So this one's just like scraps, odds and ends, a blanket, another blanket remnant. I don't know if they're saying that like the, like it was a cutter or if it was an actual fabric remnant, you know, they're just using the word blanket because that's what a lot of this fabric was used for. So this one says Pendleton blanket weight fabric, one and a half yards sold for $195. So I think this one would be an easy one if you saw like a Southwestern Western print hanging up at the with the fabric, you know, that would probably one be one to get and catch your eye no matter what. But I just wanted to throw this in here as far as um, don't underprice it either. Now here's another kind of big name in the upholstery fabric arena and that's here let me get to the top. Schumacher fabric I believe there's yeah if you look at the related searches Schumacher wallpaper. Um, so this fabric a mohair velvet fabric 30 yards of it over two thousand dollars over 2000 for a curtain fabric. I don't know how much. This one, 19 yards. Um, you know, rare. Like I said before, sometimes patterns, uh, the ra like rarity of a pattern, if it's no longer in print, if it's, you know, something that people haven't seen in a while, could have an effect on it. So, like, and I said before too, a lot of these high prices, you're talking about a lot of fabric and especially upholstery fabric, people need larger pieces in order to do the projects that they want, whether to make a curtain or to cover a chair or a couch or something like that. But people are going to pay up for it. Now, this one's amazing, Schumacher, Pearl River, uh, four yards of it, $750. Schumacher 11 yards you can see kind of this uh, citrus garden one was pretty popular such bright bright colors florals things like that are a lot of these are coming out of the United Kingdom okay nice bright someone sold a bunch of this indoor outdoor fabric that's taken up a lot of the thing Okay, so just interesting. Wow, there's a lot of that. I wonder if they were three meters. Hmm. A lot of people were selling that fabric. Or it's that same, same seller. I don't know. Okay, Cranley Garden, two and two-eighths yards, $325. So definitely, um, this is going to be true. I saw this in Schumacher and some of the other, I think like Waverly, things like that. The name of the pattern is often on the selvage, on the edge. And so that's that's good to research. 
I, a lot of times if there is a name to the fabric and I will research it in the thrift store just to double check whether it's kind of one of the sought after ones or not. So that's, as you can see in this listing, it kind of shows it in the picture, the name of the fabric, Cranley Garden, is right there. So that's always very helpful if you can do some research ahead of buying it, okay? Um, so Schumacher, that's going to be an upholstery type fabric. I think we talk about a couple more upholstery brands. This one was kind of a new one to me. I heard about it from another seller, but I forgot to do the solds. So let me pop over to that real quick. As you can see, the asking prices are kind of high. Thibo, is that how you say that? Thibo, it sounds French. Um, we've got six yards for 625. A large scale floral linen, linen print fabric, 697. Curtain upholstery fabric, 607. So again, another upholstery fabric that can be, you know, seems pretty high end. Now the other thing I, I wanted to mention, as I'm looking at these sold listings, I pretty much have it sorted to the fabric. Like if you're gonna go do your own research, which I always suggest, um, I have it sorted to the craft category and fabric because if I put in like Waverly fabric or Daisy Kingdom fabric, I'm going to get listing just in general. I'm going to get listings for um, dresses or, you know, different things that are just have that fabric that use that fabric. So I have it in the craft category to just kind of do the quick research. But the other category you can hop over to is collectibles. And some of the vintage fabric might show up in that. Um, so it just depends on what the what the buyer thought. You know, this might not be the best example, but Waverly, Ikea, some of those, you know, there somebody might be, oh, this is collectible because it's out of print. And so it's in the collectibles category. So you kind of have to bounce back and forth between the craft category and the collectibles category to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, pricing on some of these fabrics. Okay, so that was another name, Thibo, T H I B A. U T. Uh, something else I just thought of. Where did I see that? Mm, I don't see it now. Okay, maybe I'll see it coming up. Related searches. I saw it a minute ago. Here's a fun one. We're talking vintage, okay? This is one I think it even got mentioned in the comments of the last video, but this the what you're looking for is Key West hand printed fabric, um, and then especially the name I'm trying to find. Well, a lot of people just say Zuzek. Okay, so look at this this listing. We've got Key West hand print fabrics. It's Susie Zuzek is the designer, and she designed fabric for Key West handprint, I think like from the 60s to the 80s. Um, but during that time, uh, Vera, no, Vera, I was going to say Vera Newman, Lily Pulitzer was buying her fabric from Key West handprint fabrics. And so a lot of the Susie Zuzek um, prints are like Lily Pulitzer used Susie Zuzek's designs from Key West hand print fabrics. But this, and that's all like vintage, right? So a lot of these like prints you'll see, you might see all those names on it, right? You'll see Key West hand print, Susie Zuzek. They seem to be selling just fine, even if there's no connection to Lily Pulitzer. Um, but if you can watches 1966, it's a fabric catalog sample swatches sold for $250. So that, that would be super fun to look at. This one might be one that you want to, oh, this is all categories. So this is including collectibles and um, the craft section. So I can't 
switch back and forth, this is just showing everything. But a lot of these are really hard to find people I know who sell vintage fabric. They're like, this is high on their bucket list of fabric to find. So just keep that in mind. Key West hand printed fabric. And there is right here, um, this website I found, C Cooper Hewitt had a nice article, Susie Zuzek for Lily Pulitzer, the prints that made the fashion brand. And so there's just some information and some pictures if you want to read about that, I can put the link in the description down below as well. Then we're moving over to another name to keep an eye out for. It is Tula Pink, Tula Pink Fabric. So again, I'm looking in fabric. We've got a quilt kit for 500. Looks like right in the beginning, quilt kits are the high price things. And so I, what I understand for Tula Pink um, is, is that the prints get discontinued. I think this is one of those that it's a good example of that. Um, Tula Pink, there's going to be bundles of fabric. So for, for making quilts, then there's also some yardage, right? That looks like it's going for some good prices. Just very interesting fabric. Quilt, quilting fabric. So quilting weight fabric is what it's gonna be. So keep an eye out for that name, Tula Pink. Like I said, I think it has a lot to do with when a print goes discontinued. Four yards of it sold for $200. That's a nice price. Another name, so we started off my solds talking about Alexander Henry. Now, Alexander Henry, I, I'm not saying just pick up anything Alexander Henry. There, There is a lot of, um, he, like I said, they do a lot of novelty prints. So a lot of it will have to do with the subject and how rare it is, how, um, you know, how sought after the subject matter or things like that. But there's a lot of Alexander Henry. It, it was very, pro he, it just is very prolific. So there's a lot listed and a lot has sold, but maybe not like the high, high prices, but just if it's a good theme, it will sell, right? So it's a, it is a name that people look for. So this is the one I had mentioned about the Halloween fabric that sold like in August um, for the high prices. And I think it's just a nice solid, here's a nice Holly Hobby um, branded one, $108 for three yards. So just different themes, as you can see. And um, what is that? Omakase, Chef's Choice. That's kind of interesting. Dick and Jane fabric. Okay, so yeah, it's just going to depend on the subject matter and how well it does. And this might be one where if you go down and look more at like the lower price, like 10 to 20, you might find a lot more people who were selling this by the yard and getting good prices by selling it by the yard. Okay, so just another name to keep in mind. It's That's what I was kind of the goal today is just to kind of throw some names at you. You do have to do some research on it and... Um, you know, research a little bit more, even at the thrift store or ahead of time of what to kind of look for. Another name, Ash, uh, Laura Ashley. So kind of also consider the trends that are going on right now. Laura Ashley clothing is popular. Um, that whole cottage core look. So anything that's kind of calico um, or would fall into that cottage core category and you see fabric in that design, that probably would do pretty well. This one just has the name Laura Ashley attached to it. So there's some upholstery drapery fabric we see here selling for 378, uh, 28 yards for 300. Again, you keep in mind how much is available when we see the price. Um, but you can see it says English country print, 15 yards for 225. Some big rolls of this. Uh, nine yards of these pansies. So name brand, you know, vintage Laura Ashley, like this one looks like this one has about 10 yards for $125. Okay. So people might be 
you know, getting a higher price per yard by selling it individually. So you can kind of keep that in mind as well. So just kind of keep a lookout for Laura, Ashley, anything, Calico, Little House on the Prairie, all that kind of thing is kind of popular right now. You know, think of what like a, a, a gunny sack dress is, looks like. That type of fabric is going to be popular right now as well. Another name, what are we going to look at? Daisy Kingdom. Okay, so I talked about in the first video border prints. And Daisy Kingdom is kind of famous for that because they're little girl dresses. They're made for little girls or for um, dolls. And a lot of times, this is kind of where I've seen it in sewing patterns. Um, there's a, a sewing pattern for a dress and for um, a doll that match that so the girl and the doll can match. They put that together in the same pattern. Um, those can sell okay. I've sold those in lots. And, but if you can find, like sometimes at an estate sale or whatever, you find the fabric and the pattern together. Um, and if you can sell it all together, that does, that does pretty well. Um, but if we look, 1990s, 8 plus yards for 200. This paper doll uh, fabric seems to be fairly popular. Patty's paper dolls. 3 yards for 157. So very much this border print design. I think there was a, like here's an example of a little girl's, a uh, doll's doll dress. And I think it was this one. Yeah, here's a dress. So you can see the border print and then ruffles and things like that. That's kind of what people are making from the Daisy Kingdom fabric. Daisy Kingdom also did a lot of fabric panels. Um, and some of those, you know, those are easy to look up at the at the thrift store to see if those are worth picking up or not. Then Michael Miller is another name that I've kind of been on the lookout for in vintage fabric and never come across it. Um, f this one is four different one yard cuts um, sold for 160. Uh, little Rascals, 159. I don't know how much was there. Four plus yards, 108. So again, it's kind of um, novelty print is what I understand that it's known for. Michael Miller is what sells the best. So just kind of the fun, different fabrics. Here's some parrots, Michael Miller. It says, and Alexander Henry. So that might have been a lot that they put together. Um, Michael Miller, tropical fabric, four yards for 60. So again, something I would just, if I saw the name, I would just do a double, you know, I just double check it when I'm at the thrift store to see if it's a sought after, a sought after pattern, if it's discontinued, that kind of thing. And how much of it there is at the thrift store. Ikea. Now I have had some experience selling Ikea fabric. Um, Ikea... Uh, you know, they sell yardage of fabric at their stores. And a lot of times they have, it's associated with different designers. So the very first one is a bolt of fabric. Um, uh, bolts are kind of here at the top. But as we go down, Emma Jones was the designer of this one, 20 yards for $200. Awning stripe. Let's see. Here's some curtain fabric, 10 yards for 125. But I have sold Ikea of Sweden. Okay. I've sold like things like this where I just sell like a couple yards of, of something. I used to find it a lot more in Washington because there was an Ikea store there. Um, four yards, $97 for this, um, like dandelion fabric. As you can see, the, the designer is there. I think that says Amsel Westlander. So even little pieces I have, you know, I've sold. I've got some in my stash, but it's kind of stained. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do with it. It's not in the greatest condition, but very striking patterns, interesting patterns that would probably stand out to you at the thrift store or yard sale or wherever you want to do it. Let's throw something completely different back to traditional Waverly fabrics. That's kind of a well-known name. And um, 
you know, lots of florals. Again, it's going to be upholstery style fabric, most likely. And just very, this romantic cabbage rose type patterns can do pretty well. But that one's like 35 yards for $300. So again, you're going to look at that. You're going to look at what maybe the by the yard you could add. Let's try that. Let's try adding by the yard and like see in the solds. Uh, let's see. So here we go. So we have sold by the yard, like this 12 fabric, 1250, 2890 by the yard, 1599 by the yard, 1899, 2399. Okay. So maybe that was a better search we should have done, but you can, you can do that. You can play around with that switch. You know, if there's a name you're interested in, switch it to buy the yard and see where the selling prices are, if they're at like $4.99 or whatever, you can decide how you want to do that. P. Kaufman is another name uh, associated in my head with fabrics. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Sometimes up here, as you do a search, they have related. And so you can, you can get a few more ideas if you want to keep going down the rabbit hole of research. Just do a search and then look at your related ones because these are ones that, you know, people have been kind of looking, you know, might be looking for. Okay. Uh, so anyway, similar idea, nice big florals, things like that, large amounts. We can also, you know, let's do what we did. Let's add the by the yard and... That one's 10 yards. I don't know why they have. So 35 by the yard, 30 by the yard, 30, 30, 28, 28, 29, 27. You know, we're starting highest to lowest. So it will go down, you know, 1099, whatever. Okay, so that's another way to research it. Rich Loom was another name that came up along the top. You could look at what Covington J. Yang, like a lot of these I haven't heard of. Um, but Rich Loom is another name for good quality upholstery type fabric. You kind of get the idea, kind of the similar theme, especially is just this very like bold, like roses all over rose print kind of fabric can be can be sought after. Okay. Here's a new name for me, Osborne and Little, crazy um, curtain fabric. Let's see. This one has like velvet spots. Butterfly Garden made in Italy. Fabric design trailing orchid. You can see some of the prices over a hundred, depending on you know five yards. This one is Wind in the Willows, Sample Lot. Anyway, just a name I kind of came across in my um, research, and I just thought that was interesting. What else we got? Cyrus Clark, another new name for me. I don't know. I haven't seen this name, but was kind of told to be on the lookout for it. Um, probably Vintage Fabric and chintz fabric. And so, um, you know, a fabric remnant here, we've got $70, seven yards for 75. So just another name to kind of file away. And other one, oh, you know what? I'm gonna mention this. So when you look at some of these florals, it might pop into your head, this keyword that they're using here, shabby chic. Um, you don't want to use that unless it's actually the originator of Shabby Chic, Rachel, whatever her name is. You can tell me in the comments down below. Um, I'm sure she sells fabric too, but Rachel Ashwell or uh, I don't know. It's escaping me. But don't use Shabby Chic because she trademarked that name. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the two fun sales that I promised uh, that I would talk about at the end. So I did come across some 
Um, sorry, my husband's calling and I'm going to ignore him. Um, I did come across this piece of Harwood Steiger, Steiger fabric. Um, you know, so this isn't going to be like, hey, be on the lookout for it. You're going to find it all the time. It's kind of rare. It's a, you know, a smaller um, designer. It's hand printed fabric from the like Arizona Southwest. So a lot of the themes are desert and Southwest themes. Um, there can be tablecloths, there can be linens, things like that, fabric, dress panels. Um, but it was just very interesting because I found a piece and I'm going to put up a picture here too because I sold it directly to, um, I'm pretty sure it was when I had my blog and I wrote about it in my blog and I think somebody contacted me directly and asked to buy it. So I sold it directly probably for not enough money but it was like 2014. Um, and anyway, I just thought, you know, let me just show you the pictures of the piece I found. And it's just, I love vintage. So when I come across stuff, you know, when I was looking through the fabric um, section of the thrift store, like very religiously, I was looking through it and I came across it. It just looks so unusual, so vintage and everything that I wanted to um, just mention it to just kind of keep an eye out for it, maybe independent, you know, designers as well. So this was just super fun. I had an occasion to, at, through the blog and like doing my research, I messaged a woman who was writing a book about him and his designs and things like that. So it was just kind of fun to get some of that like background information. Um, so I think I just sold mine. I didn't have that much. I don't even know if I had two yards, but I think I just sold it for like, uh, it was like $30 or something like that. And, you know, this high priced one, four yards of it was rare. You know, the more yardage you have of it, people can actually make something out of it. Not just, not just collect it. Okay, and so my other fun sale that I wanted to share with you is I found a piece. Okay, well, look at this fabric. Seattle 1962, World's Fair, the Ron Worth Point um, souvenir fabric. Come to the fair. Sold for $455. Now, they had 108 inches of it. This was what's known as, like, it's a border print and it, it was repeating, right? So it had five full repeats in the pattern. So that is worth a lot because then you can make, you could probably make a skirt or something out of it. Let me show you a picture. This picture is from Mohai, which is the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle. And look at the dress. Isn't that so much fun, right? So very 60s, like you could take this fabric, they actually sold the fabric at the fair. Okay, so if you've got this fabric, you were at the World's Fair in 1962. And five full repeats, I think, you know, would be enough to make kind of the circle skirt. It's just really hard to get your hands on. Well, I did find a little bit of it. Let me see what else I was going to show you in the picture. Here you go. This is a picture. It, it's a piece that sold on Etsy, but it's from Pinterest. And you can see the repeat, what I mean by that. Now, I found a piece with like two repeats, I think. So not enough to make a skirt, but people wanted, um, you know, people just will collect a piece because of what it is. So what I ended up doing is I kept, I kept one repeat of it. And then I... Um, sold the other repeat to a collector and I sold that other piece for like $90. So I thought that was pretty good. But let me finish up and I'll show you the piece that I kept. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna show you the piece that I kept. So Mr. Pishposh mounted it on, uh, mounted it on a board for me. So this just hangs in our living room. So we just kind of turned it into a piece of art. Sorry, I'm like rolling my chair on my foot. 
and we just hang this up everywhere we go. It's just something I'm going to keep all the time because of our time that we did live near Seattle. So it's just kind of a memento souvenir of that time. So it's like super fun and it was one of my most favorite fabric finds ever. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something from it. And I just, like I said, I wanted to give you all an update on how that last listing challenge went. Leave me a comment down below how your listing challenge went for that time and um, how your fabric, what was your best fabric sale? Have you sold fabric before? Throw me some other names. I know I missed a ton. You know, there's so much information out there and um, do me a favor, go ahead and like the video, subscribe if you've watched a few of my videos and like this type of content for research and what solds and things like that. And um, that would be great. That always helps my little channel out. So I will let you go and I will see you hopefully soon.